big question looking out into the future. You're now at the, the center of the programming world. How do you think programming, the nature of programming changes in the next few months, in the next year, in the next two years, in the next five years, 10 years? I think we're really excited about a future where the programmer's in the driver's seat for a long time. And you've heard us talk about this a little bit, but one that emphasizes speed and agency for the programmer and control, the ability to modify anything you want to modify, the ability to iterate really fast on what you're building. And this is a little different, I think, than where some people um, are, are jumping to uh, in the space, where I think one idea that's captivated people is, can you talk to your um, computer? Can you have it build software for you as if you're talking to like an engineering department or an engineer over Slack? And can it just be this, this sort of isolated text box? And um, part of the reason we're not excited about that is, you know, some of the stuff we've talked about with latency, but then a, a big piece a reason we're not excited about that is because that comes with giving up a lot of control. It's much harder to be really specific when you're talking in the text box. And um, if you're necessarily just going to communicate with a thing like you would be communicating with an engineering department, you're actually abdicating tons of tons of really important decisions um, to this bot. Um, and this kind of gets at fundamentally what engineering is. Um, I think that so, some people who are a little bit more removed from engineering might think of it as, you know, the spec is completely written out and then the engineers just come and they just implement. And it's just about making the thing happen in code and making the thing um, exist. Um, but I think a lot of the, the best engineering, the engineering we enjoy, um, involves tons of tiny micro decisions about what exactly you're building and about really hard trade-offs between you know, speed and cost and just all the other th uh, things involved in a system. And uh, we want, as long as humans are actually the ones making, you know, designing the software and the ones um, specifying what they want to be built, and it's not just like company run by all AIs, we think you'll really want the humor, the human in a driver's seat um, dictating these decisions. And so there's the jury's still out on kind of what that looks like. I think that, you know, one weird idea for what that could look like is it could look like you kind of, you can control the level of abstraction you view a code base at. And you can point at specific parts of a code base that um, may, like maybe you digest uh, a code base by looking at it in the form of pseudocode. And, um, you can actually edit that pseudocode too, and then have changes get made down at the the sort of formal programming level. And you keep the like, you know, you can gesture at any piece of logic uh, in your software component of programming. You keep the inflow text editing component of programming. You keep the can control of, you can even go down into the code. You can go at higher levels of abstraction while also giving you these big productivity gains. It'd be nice if you can go up and down the, the abstraction stack. Yeah. And there are a lot of details to figure out there. That's sort of like a fuzzy idea. Time will tell if it actually works. But these these principles of of control and speed and the human in the driver's seat, we think are really important. Um, we think for some things, like Arvid mentioned before, for some styles of programming, you can kind of hand it off chatbot style, you know, if you have a bug that's really well specified. But that's not most of programming. And that's also not most of the programming we think a lot of people value. Uh, what about like the fundamental skill of programming? There's a lot of people like, young people right now kind of scared, like thinking, cause they like love programming, but they're scared about like, will I be able to have a future if I pursue this career path? Do you think the very skill of programming will change fundamentally? I actually think this is a really, really exciting time to be building software. Yeah. Like we remember what programming was like in, you know, 2013, 2012, whatever it was. Um, and there was just so much more cruft and boilerplate and, you know, looking up something really gnarly. And, you know, that, that stuff st still exists. It's definitely not at, at zero. But programming today is way more fun than back then. Um, it's like we're really getting down to the, the delight concentration. And all, of, all the things that really draw people to programming, like, for instance, this element of being able to build things really fast and um, speed and also individual control, like all of those are just being turned up a ton. Um, and so I think it's just going to be, I think it's going to be a really, really fun time for people who build software. Um, I think that the skills will probably change too. I, I think that people's taste and creative ideas will be magnified and it will be less about, maybe less a little bit about 
boilerplate text editing, maybe even a little bit less about carefulness, which I think is really important today. If you're a programmer, I think it'll be a lot more fun. What do you guys think? I agree. I'm I'm very excited to be able to change. Like, just uh, what one thing that that happened recently was like we wanted to do a relatively big migration to our code base. We were using async local storage in, in Node.js, which is known to be not very performant, and we wanted to migrate to a context object. And this is a big migration and affects the entire code base. And Swal and I spent, I don't know, five days uh, working through this, even with today's AI tools. And I am really excited for a future where I can just show a couple of examples and then the AI applies that to all of the locations. And then it highlights, oh, this is a new example. Like, what should I do? And then I show exactly what to do there. And then that can be done in like 10 minutes. Uh, and then you can iterate much, much faster. Then you can, then you don't have to think as much up front and stay, stand at the blackboard and like think exactly like, how are we going to do this? Because the cost is so high. But you can just try something first and you realize, oh, this is not actually exactly what I want. And then you can change it instantly again after. And so, yeah, I think being a programmer in the future is going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, I, I really like that point about it feels like a lot of the time with programming, there are two ways you can go about it. One is like you think really hard, carefully up front about the best possible way to do it. And then you spend your limited time of engineering to actually implement it. Uh, but I much prefer just getting in the code and like, you know, taking a crack at it, seeing how it, how, it, how it kind of lays out and then iterating really quickly on that. That feels more fun. Um, yeah, like just speaking to generating the boilerplate is great. So you just focus on the difficult design, nuanced, difficult design decisions. The migration, I feel like this is, this is a cool one. Like it seems like large language models are able to basically translate from one program language to another or like translate, like migrate in the general sense of what migrate is. Um, but that's in the current moment. So I mean, the, the fear has to do with like, okay, as these models get better and better, then you, you're doing less and less creative decisions. And is it going to kind of move to a place where it's, uh, you're operating in the design space of natural language, where natural language is the main programming language. And I guess I get asked that by way of advice. Like if somebody's interested in programming now, what do you think they should learn? Like do they, uh, you guys started in some Java <laughs> and, uh, I forget the oh some PHP, PHP. Objective C, Objective C. There you go. Um, yeah. I mean, Apple in the C. end, we all know JavaScript is going to win, <laughs> uh, and not TypeScript. It's just it's going to be like vanilla JavaScript. It's just going to <laughs> eat the world, and maybe a little bit of PHP. And I mean, it also brings up the question of like I think Don Knuth has a this idea that some percent of the population is geeks, and like there's a particular kind of psychology in mind required for programming. And it feels like more and more that expands. The kind of person that should be able to, can do great programming might expand. I think different people do programming for different reasons, but I think the true, maybe like the best programmers um, are the ones that really love, just like absolutely love programming. For example, there, there are folks on our team who Literally, when they're, they get back from work, they go and then they boot up Cursor and then they start coding on their side projects for the entire night and they stay up till 3 a.m. doing that. Um, and when they're sad, they, they've said, I just really need to code. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I think like, you know, there's, there's that level of programmer where like this obsession and love of programming um, I think makes really the best programmers. And I think the, the, these types of people will really get into the details of how things work. I guess the question I'm asking, that exact program, let's think about that person. When you're when the super tab, the super awesome praise be the tab is succeeds, and you keep pressing tab. That person in the team loves to curse the tab well, more than anybody else, right? Yeah, and it's also not just like, like pressing tab is like the, just pressing tab, that's like the easy way to say it and the, and the catch catchphrase, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, but what you're actually doing when you're pressing tab is that you're you're injecting intent uh, all the time while you're doing it. You're, you're 
uh, sometimes you're rejecting it, sometimes you're typing a few more characters. Um, and, and that's the way that you're, uh, you're sort of shaping the things that's being created. And I, I think programming will change a lot to just what is it that you want to make? It's, it's sort of higher bandwidth. The communication yeah. to the computer just becomes higher and higher bandwidth as opposed to like, like just typing is much lower bandwidth than, than communicating intent. I mean, this goes to your uh, manifesto titled Engineering Genius. We are an applied research lab building extraordinary productive human AI systems. So speaking to this like hybrid element. Mm -hmm. uh, to start, we're building the engineer of the future, a human AI programmer that's an order of magnitude more effective than any one engineer. This hybrid engineer will have effortless control over their code base and no low entropy keystrokes. They will iterate at the speed of their judgment, even in the most complex systems. Using a combination of AI and human ingenuity, they will outsmart and out-engineer the best pure AI systems. We are a group of researchers and engineers. We build software and models to invent at the edge of what's useful and what's possible. Our work has already improved the lives of hundreds of thousands of programmers. And on the way to that, we'll at least make programming more fun. So thank you for talking today. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Thank you.